what is the goal of robotics? What's the general problem of robotics we're trying to solve? You actually kind of painted two pictures here, one of sort of the narrow, one is the general. What in your view is the big problem of robotics? Again, ridiculously philosophical high level questions. I think that, um, you know, maybe there are two ways I can answer this question. One is there's a very pragmatic problem, which is like, what would make robots, what would sort of maximize the usefulness of robots? And there the answer might be something like a system where uh, uh, a system that uh, can uh, perform whatever task a human user uh, sets for it, you know, within the physical constraints, of course. If you tell it to teleport to another planet, it probably can't do that. But if you, if you ask it to do something that's within its physical capability, then potentially with a little bit of uh, additional training or a little a bit of additional trial and error, it ought to be able to figure it out in much the same way as like a human teleoperator ought to figure out how to, how to drive the robot to do that. That's kind of a, the very pragmatic uh, view of what it would take to kind of solve the, the robotics problem, if we will. But I think that there is a second answer, and that answer th that's, the answer is a lot closer to why I want to work on, on robotics, which is that I think it's, it's, it's less about what it would take to do a really good job in the world of robotics, but more the other way around, what robotics can bring to the table to help us understand artificial intelligence. So your dream fundamentally is to understand intelligence. Yes, I think that's the dream for many people who, 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 work, who actually work in this space. Uh, I think that there's, there's something very pragmatic and very useful about studying robotics, but I, I do think that a lot of people that go into this field, actually, uh, you know, the things that they draw inspiration from are the potential for robots to like help us learn about intelligence and about ourselves. So that's, that's fascinating that robotics is basically the space by which you can get closer to understanding the fundamentals of artificial intelligence. So what is it about robotics that's different from some of the other approaches? So if we look at some of the early breakthroughs in deep learning or in the computer vision space and the natural language processing, there's really nice clean benchmarks that a lot of people competed on and thereby came out with a lot of brilliant ideas. What's the fundamental difference to you between computer vision, purely defined and image net and kind of the bigger robotics problem? So there are a couple of things. Uh, one is that with robotics, um, you kind of have, um, you kind of have to take away many of the crutches. So you have to deal with, with both the, the, the particular problems of perception control and so on, but you also have to deal with the integration of those things. And, uh, you know, classically, we've always thought of the integration as kind of a separate problem. So a, a classic kind of modular engineering approach is that we solve the individual subproblems, then wire them together, and then the whole thing works. Um, and one of the things that we've been seeing over the last couple of decades is that, well, maybe studying the thing as a whole might lead to just like very different solutions than we, if we were to study the parts and wire them together. So the integrative nature of robotics research helps us see, you know, the different perspectives on the problem. Uh, another part of the answer is that with robotics, um, it it casts a certain uh, paradox into very clever relief. So that this is sometimes referred to as a Morvik's paradox, the uh, idea that in artificial intelligence, things that are very hard for people can be very easy for machines, and vice versa, things that are very easy for people can be very hard for machines. So you know. Uh, integral and differential calculus is pretty difficult to learn for people, but if you program a computer to do it, it can derive derivatives and integrals for you all day long without any trouble. Uh, whereas uh, some things like, you know, drinking from a cup of water, very easy for a person to do, very hard uh, for a robot to deal with. And sometimes when we see such blatant discrepancies, that gives us a really strong hint that we're missing something important. So if we really try to zero in on those discrepancies, we might find that little bit that we're missing. And it's not that we need to make machines better at, or, or worse at math and better at drinking water, but just that by studying those discrepancies, we might find some new uh, insight. So that, that, could be, that could be in any space. It doesn't have to be robotics, but you're saying, um, I mean, I, I get, it's kind of interesting that robotics seems to have a lot of those discrepancies. So yeah. the, the, the Hans Marva, Paradox is probably referring to the space of the, the physical interaction, like you said, object manipulation, walking, all the kind of stuff we do in the physical world. That, well, how do you make sense, if you were to try to disentangle uh, the, the Marvax paradox, 
like why is there such a gap in our intuition about it? Why do you think manipulating objects is so hard from everything you've learned from applying reinforcement learning in this space? Yeah, I think that one reason is maybe that um, for many of the pro for many of the other problems that we've studied in AI and computer science and so on, the notion of input, output, and supervision is much, much cleaner. So computer vision, for example, deals with very complex inputs, but it's comparatively a bit easier, at least up to some level of abstraction, to cast it as a very tightly supervised problem. It's comparatively much, much harder to cast robotic manipulation as a very tightly supervised problem. You can do it. It just doesn't seem to work all that well. So you could say that, well, maybe we get a labeled data set where we know exactly which motor commands to send, and then we train on that. But for various uh, reasons, that's not actually like such a great solution. And it also doesn't seem to be even remotely similar to how people and animals learn to do things because we're not told by like our parents, here's how you uh, fire your muscles in order to walk. Uh, we, you know, we do get some guidance, but the really low level detailed stuff we figure out mostly on our own. And that's what you mean by tightly coupled that every single little sub action gets a supervised signal of whether it's a good one or not. Right. So so while in computer vision, you could sort of imagine up to a level of abstraction that maybe, you know, somebody told you this is a car and this is a cat and this is a dog. In motor control, it's very clear that that was not the case. 